Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we begin our study of Philippians chapter 1, verses 6 through 11, titled, The Day of Jesus Christ. And we will compare the day of Jesus Christ with the day of the Lord. And while making some very careful observations, we will also look at the practical implications which is Paul's point in making the reference to the day of Jesus Christ at the end of verse 6 and verse 10 as the day of Christ. If you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests, please send those by email to bbbfohio at yahoo.com or you can send them by U.S. Postal to P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. And now we join our study of Philippians chapter 1, verses 6 through 11, titled, The Day of Jesus Christ. And we begin with a song from Sister Megan, a very special young lady singing, A Closer Walk with Thee. This is part one of two. Philippians 1, 6 through 11, and we're going to title this, The Day of Jesus Christ. We left off uh, with verse 6, and that's where we're going to pick up as we read. Go ahead and read that with me. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, 
which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. All God's people say amen. amen. So we left off in verse 6 in our last study, and uh, we really just kind of mentioned those last five ver words in that verse, the day of Jesus Christ. And of course, you're not really going to understand the implications of that uh, unless you know what it means. Amen? And so um, we're going to look at this uh, phrase that Paul uses exclusively. You won't find it used by anybody else. The day of Jesus Christ or the day of Christ in reference to believers. So when you, it's a message to believers. It's something uh, applying to believers. The day of Jesus Christ. It begins with the rapture and the judgment seat of Christ. Just keep that in mind. The day of Jesus Christ begins with the rapture and um, the judgment seat of Christ is what happens right after the rapture. And for believers, the day of Jesus Christ should always bring to mind the rapture and the judgment seat of Christ. I want to look at this over in 1 Corinthians. If you turn your Bibles over there, just back a few pages. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 where he also makes this reference, uh, beginning in verse 4, in his uh, letter to the church of Corinth. And uh, we pick up verse 4 after the introductions and the, and the salutation. And verse 4 says, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. Verse 5, read that with me that in everything ye are enriched by Him in all utterance and in all knowledge. So he's referring there to the work that's being done in you that we're reading about in Philippians chapter 1. The work being done in you, being enriched by Him in all utterance and in all knowledge. Uh, verse 6 says, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Now read verse 7. So that ye come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's, again, uh, the gift, it's referring to that you become be, uh, behind in no gift. That's the work being done in you. Uh, the work of God in you is God's gift to you, and that's where you then develop your gifts to be used in ministering to others. And, of course, the self-centered uh, believer who is all about self and not about God isn't really concerned with being developed and having that work in them done so that they can serve others. They're concerned with me, 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 me. Right? I've said I, a lot of these uh, churches today that needs to be a praise song that they sing. They need to just everybody lift up your hands and wave left to right, go back and forth. Lift up your hands, wave them just... Uh, lift your hands up in the air. Wave them like you just don't care. Sing it with me. Me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. Yeah. That's what most praise services ought to be. Because that's what it's all about. Me, me, me. But when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, suddenly you die. Do you know that? You want to know somebody who isn't filled with the Holy Ghost? If they're all about themselves, they're not filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's why I have real trouble with these people running around saying, you know, I'm blessed and highly favored. Me, 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 me. And I, am, I pray in the name of Jesus that I get this and I get that and I have this and I have that. Something wrong with that. I'm not saying we don't pray and ask God to provide. We do. But that's not what we're all, we're all about. And uh, there's something wrong with that. What we're supposed to be doing is uh, developing our gifts to be used. And look what it says at the end of verse 7. Waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know that a lot of the teachers today, including the Rick Warren purpose driven thing, they tell you it's a sin for you to be concerned about the second coming. Because you're supposed to be all about finding your purpose. Me, 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 me. And they actually tell, they say that people who are hung up on, hung up on, 
Get that phrase? Hung up on. Yeah, I'm hung up on it. Amen. I'm looking for it. Amen. <laughs> the blessed hope. Amen. The appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, he, Paul says we're supposed to be waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but obviously connected to the rest of what he said doesn't mean you just sit around and look it up. Any minute now. Hey, Greg, you want to go soul winning? Oh, I'm afraid I'll miss it. <laughs> see, that's not how it works either. You see, how do you demonstrate that you're waiting for the coming of Jesus Christ? You're busy. He says, one of the stories Jesus told to demonstrate this, He said that he, the, the Lord, the Master, told uh, His servant, Occupy until I come. Amen. Occupy till I come. That's how you know someone's really interested in and waiting on the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Uh, look busy. <laughs> That's how you know. You want to be caught active. You want to be caught working for the Lord. Now, of course, if He comes in you know, 3 a.m., yeah, you'll be sleeping. I'll be awake, but you'll be sleeping. Because I, I'm a night person. I, I have trouble some nights. I was up till 3 o'clock. That's why we didn't have a work day Saturday morning. Sometimes it's my health <clears throat> that keeps me up. But uh, when most of us would be asleep, um, he comes in. But what it means is that in your life, generally speaking, you're not in a law. You're not in a state of lethargy. Lethargy, is that what you call it? Lethargic state. Uh, apathetic and not caring and that, that that's you don't want to be caught like that when Jesus comes back if you're asleep when he comes back it should be after a hard day of serving the Lord with an agenda the next day to serve the Lord so read verse 8 with me who shall also wait a minute read it with me who shall also confirm you unto the end that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ that's eternal security once you're saved, you're always saved. Why? Because it's not you saving you. It's Jesus saving you. And He says, it doesn't say might. It doesn't say He might confirm you unto the end. It doesn't say that. He shall confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this, is, this reference to the day of Jesus Christ is for believers. Amen. That you should be looking forward to that day. Now turn over a couple of pages to 1 Corinthians 3. And beginning in verse uh, 13, I'm going to begin in verse 11 to read. It says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon the, this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, which is all useless, by the way. Verse 13 says, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So what I'm saying is that you are thinking about that. If you're spirit-filled and looking for, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, that right there is what you're looking for. You're looking at the fact that at any moment you could be raptured, and at any moment after that rapture, you're going to be judged. That's what you're living for. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, that's what's on your mind. Verse 14, if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive reward. Yay! But it's not all yay. Verse 15, read that with me. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So yes, if you're saved, you're saved. You're not going to lose salvation, but you can lose reward. And if you don't think that's really important, because I'll hear people say, well, so what? I mean, right there, right there. that's just you're talking to a spiritual infant. They have not developed and matured to the point to understand how serious this thing is. And I always say this, if you were to graduate from high school or college, and you go up there to get your diploma, and as you get to the man getting ready to hand you a diploma, you suddenly, your robe falls off and you're standing there totally naked, and the man says, oh, I'm sorry, we don't have one for you says it loud enough, everybody can hear it. And you're standing on the stage, totally naked, and not getting a diploma. That would be mortifying. It would totally melt you. That's nothing compared to being found empty on this day. 
So anybody who says, oh, well, who cares if I, you know, as long as I can't lose my salvation and I go to heaven, that's all I care about. That's just ignorance. Amen. And you can be saved, but even though you don't live for the Lord, you don't do, you, and the works you do, you do for yourself. You do for your own glory. They'll burn. But it says, yet you'll be saved, yet so as by fire. Can you imagine that being you? Being saved and standing before the Lord, but nothing to show for it, but a big smoldering mess, smoke. Yeah. But it, there's more to it than that. Verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? When you're saved, the Spirit of God comes in to dwell in you, and once He's there, He's not leaving. But, look what, look what 17 says. Read that with me. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Did you get that? So if you're saved, you're saved. But if you do not live for the Lord and you start defiling that temple and living in sin, if you're really one of His, He's going to chastise you. He's going to try to reason with you. He's going to try to deal with you and to bring you to repentance. And if you will not... Cease, says, him shall God destroy. Now, I can't sit here and name names and tell you I know for sure this guy, this girl, but I have a pretty good idea of some people that God just killed and took home because they lived so wicked after being saved. And some of them had months or years where they even lived for the Lord and then suddenly turned. And God dealt with them and dealt with them, and after a while, they wouldn't repent. And so He killed them and took them home. That's the reality. So, that's the day of Jesus Christ is the day that you will be raptured, or it's the day of your resurrection if you die and you're one of those that sleep in Jesus when the rapture comes. And the day of the Lord. You ever heard that phrase? Day of the Lord? You heard that? They refer to the same age or uh, day or time period. And I, wanna, I want you to understand this. You may not understand as I even telling you this how important it is for you to get this. That the day of the Lord, Jesus Christ, or the day of Christ, and the day of the Lord, they're not the same, but they take place at the same time. The reason why that's important to understand is because if you try to make them the same, then it's like making the rapture and the return the same. They're not. The rapture, believers are caught up in the air. At the return, believers come to the earth. At the rapture, we're caught up into the air. At the return, we're on white horses and we come down. At the rapture, the believers are rescued before all hell breaks loose on earth. The return happens after all hell has broken loose and we're coming back with Jesus Christ as He kills the Antichrist and all who take the mark of the beast. Yeah. At the rapture, we go up and we have the judgment seat of Christ and the marriage supper of the Lamb and then get ready to return. But at the return, we come back and we help, we actually observe <coughs> as Jesus establishes His kingdom for a thousand years. Amen. They're not the same, amen? We have a few new people. I should have put a slide in here. Let's say this with you. Things that are different are not the same. Things that are different are not the same. <laughs> That's a very important rule for Bible interpretation. If they're different, they're not the same. So the day of Jesus Christ and the day of the Lord, they're not the same event, but they do take place at the same time. And so it's important to understand this. And so when we talk about the day of the Lord Jesus Christ or the day of Christ... But even when we talk about the day of the Lord, we know it coincides with this. So to believers, this time is wonderful. To the lost, <clears throat> this time is devastating. Some of you saw the movie we watched, Vanished, wasn't it? Called Vanished. <clears throat> How many times did you watch it, Charity? Twice? Twice. Twice. <clears throat> but it uh, had a great rapture scene. And um, afterwards... Um, <coughs> I, I, excuse me for my choking up on you, but after the rapture, my, my main criticism of all these movies is, number one, they never really show the devastation. I mean emotionally, spiritually. 
before all the physical dev devastation starts. After the rapture, let's say if you're not saved here this morning, <clears throat> and the rapture happens in about 15 seconds, and you're sitting there all by yourself, don't tell me you're not going to almost psychotically check out. Amen. And they never really portray that in these movies. There are going to be people who just totally flip. I believe there's going to be some people who their anxiety and panic will be so deep they'll drop dead. Imagine that. You miss the rapture, and then a few seconds later, you split hell wide open. That's the reality. For the, uh, for the lost. <clears throat> for the saved, phew, praise the Lord. We'll be gone. We won't see all that. Isaiah 2.12 describes the day of the Lord like this. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall what? Be brought low. Be brought low. See, the, the Christians are, are removed, and there will be some who didn't know the gospel, didn't reject the gospel, they'll be saved. But it's not going to be the huge number that some people have uh, pretended. But it'll be a large number, and it'll be from every tongue, tribe, and nation. And uh, most of them, after being saved, uh, they will go to heaven by being killed. A lot of them be decapitated, have their head be beheaded, according to the book of Revelation. But those who, believe it or not, when the rapture takes place, <clears throat> they're going to be arrogant people are going to say, that wasn't no stupid rapture. You people, you know it was aliens. <laughs> <laughs> then you're going to have these gurus come on there and say, oh, oh, then. And they're going to say, well, what do you think about this? These spirit masters have taken these troublemakers away from us to spiritually re-engineer them. And after they make them acceptable to the world order, they will return. Think about this. Think about this. They think we've gone away to be reprogrammed. And when we're reprogrammed, we return as useful citizens to the one world order. Those uh, who have that mindset, think about it. There's a possibility that they survive to the end of the tribulation and they see us returning and thinking, oh, all this trouble we're having will come to an end because now the reprogrammed people are coming back. <laughs> Only to then see Jesus on the white horse and He speaks a word and... <laughs> Strong delusion. So the day of the Lord is as a day of judgment and wrath. Don't forget that. If you ever hear, and I've heard it, Christians say, oh, I'm looking forward to the day of the Lord. You're an imbecile. You don't, you don't know the Bible any better than you know trigonometry you don't look forward to the day of the Lord you thank God that you're not going to be here for it Amen. Isaiah 13 6 he says how ye he's not joking he's not trying to be funny for the day of the Lord is at hand it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty that's the day of the Lord it's a day of destruction you mean sweet little Jesus? <laughs> yeah, Jesus can be as sweet as anything. Amen? Amen? But He's also a God of war. Mm -hmm. And if you don't believe me, just go read Revelation 19. Amen. The day's coming. So it's all about perspective. If you're saved, you look forward to the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're lost, you face the day of the Lord. Yeah. You're not looking forward to it, but you face it. Joel 1.15 Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Mm -hmm. 
That's the day of the Lord. So it's important to understand that the day of the Lord and the day of Jesus Christ both refer to the same time period but apply to two different types of people. And in several instances, just to get, show you what I mean, several instances, uh, Scripture refers to the same day or event by different names. Or uh, these are events that take place. I should have worded that a little better. It's days that take place at the same time by different days. For example, in one verse, you'll see everlasting life versus everlasting contempt. In Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, it says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. You see that? They're both everlasting. But one is to everlasting life, and other to everlasting contempt. The everlasting age is life to God's people. Can you say, thank God? Thank God. <laughs> Everlast the everlasting age is contempt to children of the devil. Now, I just got to throw this in there. This is very important. Because some people say, I don't know that I can enjoy heaven knowing that my loved ones are in a lake of fire. And I just have to tell you, don't try to figure this out beforehand, but I'm here to tell you at the great white throne judgment, you're going to see your loved ones for what they really are. Yeah. And but for the grace of God, there go you and I. Yeah. If we weren't saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, then we would stand at that same great white throne judgment, that's the one where they're naked. Yeah. Amen. And they're going to be, it's all going to be laid out, and you're going to see that nice, sweet person that you think it's just not even going to be enjoyable to be in heaven without them. You're going to see how rotten, filthy, and wicked they really are. Amen. Knowing we are just as rotten, filthy, and wicked but we've been saved. Amen. We've been washed. That's the difference. So as we think about that day, your status as saved or lost makes all the difference. Amen. If you're saved here this morning, yeah, you know, we still will weep over the lost. We'll still have our hearts a break over the lost. But when it comes to you and your future, it's nothing but good because of Jesus. And if you're lost hearing this message right now, you're damned. And you need to stop playing games with God because you're going to hell. Amen. And hell is eternal. And it's a lake of fire. And you're going to burn and burn and burn because you deserve it. Amen. I deserved hell. I deserved a lake of fire. That's why it's called grace. Grace that because I repented toward God with faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ, I don't have to burn. Amen. But every human being, before they're saved, every human being deserves a lake of fire. You deserve to burn. Amen. And if you don't understand that, it's because you don't compare yourself to a holy God, you compare yourself to your own opinion, and that's foolish. But if you compare yourself to a holy God, an eternal God, and you're nothing but wicked and sinful, you'll understand that you deserve hell, and then that makes you not only when you turn and get saved, it makes you forever grateful. You'll want to sing about Jesus forever. Now I know I'm going to make a couple of you mad right now. Some of you don't sing when we sing hymns. And your excuse is you don't sound good. That's pride. I don't give a flip whether you sound good or not. You ought to sing. You can hum. I had a, uh, uh, and she would, during church, she would look like this. And I thought, that's just strange.